Shalom. Thank you for waiting. Shalom. Harrison Pereira. Glad you're back, Harrison. Better or worse? Gary, Kenneth, Thea, Jeff, Troy, Yaka, Mentat Assassin, Betty, Annie, Brenda, Tet, Pay, Trisha. I think that's everyone, right? Well, kind of telegram covering up the bottom of the last one. Sorry if I left you anybody out. So glad you guys could all make it for, oh, Michael, there you are, and Carol. So glad you guys could all make it for our Hebrew directed immersion for the books of the prophets. We are continuing our journey in First Kings. Oh, okay, I'm frozen on Brenda's camera uh, screen. Am I streaming on anybody else's? Can you hear me? Let's see, do you hear me? My my YouTube shows a spinning thing in the creator thing, but it says excellent connection. So hope you guys are receiving as we're actually live tonight. Okay, Gary says, sounds good. Okay, it's good. Must have just been a hiccup over by you then. Praise God, that's great. Okay, let me choose a psalm here real quickly. Okay. That's 14 came to mind. We'll see what that's about. Boom. Um, by the way, I think I'll share this. There was some funny Moti Shem Ra that was going around. Well, I don't know if it was going around, but someone was trying to pull it on one of my admins, saying that he had been contacted by my daughter in Ohio, who was, what's the city in Ohio? Anyway, and that she was being abused by her uncles. And it's really a funny story because the age of the girl, I think the story was that she's 14. Well, I lived in Europe in those days. So unless I'm just like super virile and like cross continents can, you know, cause pregnancies, kind of a funny story. Yeah. So it just occurred to me that some people, Baruch Hashem, you've all been really good, not doing any Motsi Shimra. But uh, if you heard this outlandish tale, we, we had an admin who seemed to have been an undercover religion of peace guy. Who we had, who we booted out. He's been trying to get back at us ever since. So just take it with a grain of salt. Or if you have any questions for me, I'm I'm open. You can ask me if you want to know. And as far as like my uncles abusing her, I mean her uncles. That's pretty funny because my brothers, my brothers live in different states. Neither of them are that place. <laughs> like, and I don't even have contact with my brothers. So it's kind of a, a funny. So it just came to mind to share that. Maybe the Ruach, if maybe someone's concerned or you're worried, you can talk to me about it in private. It's a it's a very funny story. Like every single detail is impossible. So anyway, and I would never leave a child. Never would leave a child. Never, never. I, I couldn't even imagine to be away from children for any amount of time. So, oh, Cleveland. I think it was Cleveland. I think that was the story. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like a whole like multi-year block where I'm living in Switzerland during this time and <laughs> like and yeah, anyway. It's it's one of those stories that it's just funny, you know. It's like so and it tells me we're doing something right. I think if the Nachash is trying to spread these kind of lies, you know, it's like so I know some of you are probably thinking why you're sharing it. Because to me it's so funny. It's like it's it's so not me. It's false. It's humorous. And like I said, I can even produce passports with entry and exit times in the States. It's, I guess maybe I could have met somebody in a, maybe like the gal could have come to Switzerland or something or anyway. Uh, so let's do our prayer for Psalm 14. Yo, Dalit, this one just came to mind. I don't remember what it's about. Let's hope that things are in tune. Lamatzeh le David or le Dovid. Amar Naval Belibo ain Elohim. His feet to hit Evu Alila ain all say tov. Adonai Mishemaim Hishkiv Albene Adam. The rot Hayesh Maskil 
דורש את אלוהים. הכל שר יחדיו נאלחו, אין עושה טוב. אין גם אחד. הלא ידעו כל פועלי עוון. אוכלי עמי אכלו לחם. יוד ה' וואו ה' אדוני לא קרע אושם. פחד ופחד כי אלוהים בדור צדיק עצת עני תבישו. כי אדוני מחסהו מי ייתן מציון ישועת ישראל ושוב אדוני שבות עמו יגל יעקב ישמח ישראל. For the conductor of David, the fool says in his heart, and this word for fool in Hebrew, we have different words, this chesil is another one, but naval means like someone who rejects obeying the Bible, rejects obeying God, right? That's what fool means. Billy Bo, in his mind, in his heart, there is no God. Everything is ruined. It's all gone off the path. Alila. As deeds. Ain al say tov. There's nobody who does any good. This is even the fool saying this. There's no good people. Adonai Mishemayim, but God, pardon me, Hashem from the heavens, he shkif, he looks down, al bene Adam, upon human beings, the sons of Adam. The road to see, ha, is there yesh maskil, anyone who's intelligent? The resh et Elohim, who seeks after God? Hakol sar, but all of them have turned yachdav together. Ne'elachu, they have become debased. Ein aseto, there isn't anyone who does good. Ein gam echad, there is not even one. Haloya de'u kol po eleyavin. Is it, ah, haloya de'u kol po eleyavin. All, is it not that all of them have known doing iniquity? Or actually, avin, it's, avin can mean a lot of things. And Avin can even be like a, a pagan festival, or it can be injustice, right? Something like this. Ochalei <laughs> ami, those who eat my people. Achalu lechem, as eat, they eat bread. Adonai lo kara'u, but they have not called Adonai. Sham pachalu fachad, there they gather a cabal. Ki Elohim, for God, bedro tzadik, is in the generation of the righteous or the just. Ratzat ani, the the Aitza, the council of the poor. Tavishu, they are they make ashamed. Ki Adonai machsehu, while Adonai is his refuge. Mi yiten mitzion Yeshuat Yisrael. Who is it who gives from Zion or ascribes from Zion the salvation, the victory of Israel? Beshu Adonai. Shivut Amo, when Adonai returns the fortunes of his people, this word can also mean the captives of his people. Yagil Yaakov, then Jacob will be glad. Yismach Yisrael, and Israel will rejoice. All right, Psalm 14. <laughs> Jeff says, I hope you PayPal them some money. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Just so funny. Um, yeah, one of my admins told me about this a couple, maybe it was a few weeks ago or a month ago even, and it's just been kind of a running joke. I just said, ah, I'd share with the people. Sometimes the Motsi Shemra is so funny, it's better for people to hear about it directly from, from the person it's about, so they know it's just total nonsense. All right, let's see here. Slideshow from third slide. All right, we are in... 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 17. I need to change you to... Boom. No, the... Ah, okay. Sorry, I made a mistake. I'm not showing it on the right monitor. There we go. Okay. So here we are in our graphic novel. If you want to get this graphic novel, I don't get any kickbacks for this. But we are using it, and they are kind of a cool publisher to do stuff like this. You can go to glossahouse.com if you want to get it from them. Or you can check the link down in the description below. I have a link to them. I think directly to this book, but maybe not. All right. Um, verse 17. Oh, yeah, I made it bigger. So here's the picture. So you can see the picture first, right? 
He's riding off on his Makava, his chariot. Oh, thank you for that, Brenda. It's all right. It's good my admin knew it was a bunch of nonsense, you know, so there was no division between brothers. <laughs> all right. And let's get a bit bigger. And they're in the background, like, oh, they seem kind of mad. <laughs> look, look at these guys. Hold on. Let me, let's see. Ah, I always turn it the wrong way. There we go. See? Picking up rocks and stuff. Grr. And he's just kind of chilling right enough. <laughs> All right. Now we'll zoom in on the text. I hope that's clear to you guys. I just chopped from the same picture and zoomed in on it. Let's read. Uvene Yisrael hayoshevim be'arei Yehuda v'yimloch alehem v'chav'am. All right. Hmm. Okay, so here we have our U and, oops, I think PowerPoint just crashed on me. Did it crash? No, it's back. That was weird. What happened? Okay, there I see you guys. Good. Ooh, that's not the color I selected. Strange. I wonder if my script didn't run. Hold on. Run. <clears throat> Yay, there we go. The script just didn't run real well. Okay. So here we have our and because of bump schwa. Okay. The bait it satisfies the B and bump schwa. And then banim is children, would have ended in mem. And because the mem is not there, it means children of. Bene, children of, it's a construct chain. The last word in the chain is definite. There we go. Yeah, fine tuning the special effects. That's right. Getting my process down. <laughs> well, I have a button in this device that when I press it, it runs a script. And that script is where I went through and I saw the colors programmatically in PowerPoint, right, that I want. And so then I can just press buttons on my thing. Yeah, maybe I'll show you guys. It's kind of cool. So you can, let's see, let's see. You can see. I can't see it so well there. Here, I'll share real quick. I think it's kind of neat. Okay. It doesn't look so great under the document camera, but here we go. See, see? So I made all these, I made all these color buttons on it. And I made this little, I got this microscope icon. I made it so I can zoom in and out, turning this knob. <laughs> and then I put the color names here so I can find them more quickly. If the Hebrew is shorter than the English, that's why there's Hebrew there. You know? And then I've got like, oh, hold on. All right? So I made all of these then kind of fine-tune the device, but I have to first run my script first, and so the script seemed to not take off just now. So anyway, if you're interested in what I'm doing, that's <laughs> when I'm looking down, I'm pushing stuff and turning knobs. I got other knobs over here and stuff, so <laughs> kind of neat. All right, let's, uh... oh, and this is for my video software, right? I can make myself disappear or whatever. <laughs> uh -huh. And I can change scenes. But that one is acting up right now for some reason, so I'll do it manually. There we are, we're back. Yeah, cool, right, Mentat Assassin? <laughs> yeah. So the script sets up the proper hotkeys for the colors and stuff, and then the button fires off those hotkeys, right, button, right? So anyway, for those of you interested in that kind of thing, <laughs> that's why I'm looking down and pressing buttons and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, where do you find the time to do all that? It was exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. And, uh, you know, we had an anonymous donor who wanted to get this device for me. So, Baruch Hashem. And I was very excited to, you know, to learn how to do it. I'm still fine-tuning it, learning more ways to use it. Because it also controls the video software. Right? So, I, I did some of the setup for that. But sometimes it doesn't 
I'm still kind of flaky in controlling the video software, so that's why sometimes stuff is, yeah. Yeah, there's what's going on behind the curtain then. <laughs> Maybe sometime I'll, I'll show you the room. We have sound foam all over the room that someone else donated the funds for, I guess a year and a half ago or so. And uh, that took some time putting that all up, but this room used to be like an echo chamber. You know, I couldn't talk in here. That's why you always hear the chickens and the dogs barking before, because I'm in the other room that is right by the street, you know, and right by the neighbors. This, we have squatter neighbors on the side, and they've got a bunch of chickens everywhere, so you hear the chickens and stuff, or sometimes children shouting on the street. But now I'm back in the echo room, which no longer echoes. I right? got two big bright lights, and uh, a gracious SLR was donated. That's what you're seeing me on that's working right now, Baruch Hashem. Got one monitor over here that's a donation. And then a monitor here that I purchased from donations to Amazon, right? And, uh, of course, we have our our Blue Yeti microphone back in action with the ancient Sumerian USB cable. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm using my a tablet to draw on. That's how I get the drawing effects to work. You know, so I can actually handwrite and draw on the screen. Before, I used to try to draw on the computer screen using a mouse. And uh, that was not fun. That's, if you've ever seen my older videos where it's so sloppy, that's what's happening. I'm trying to use a mouse to write Hebrew words and stuff, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Baruch Hashem. So thank you to those of you who have donated to the studio. I really appreciate it that we can keep getting better and better, making things more vivid, more work more effectively, sound better, etc. Yeah. So anything we do... We do for the Lord, right? And especially when we're doing ministry, it really should be the best we can do, yeah? So I'm very happy about that. All right. So back to this. Yeah, that's a little glitchy. See, so I, I press my laser button. And lately, the laser button, I don't know what's happening. It just freezes there. So I'm just going to have to leave him there, and we'll use the arrow. I don't, I don't know why that's happening. It, like, activates the laser, but then it doesn't let me control it. So that's just kind of bizarre. So we'll use the white arrow instead. So instead of banim, bene, so it's children of u bene Israel, because that last word is definite. Maybe we'll use brick red, yeah. Israel is a name. The whole chain is going to be definite. We have to take the Venus from Israel over. So, and the Bene Israel and the children of Israel. <laughs> Fancy, yeah. <laughs> Hayoshavim. So, the ha, okay, the verb is Yashav, right? You guys surely recognize the verb. Y yod, Shin, Beit. Yashav, to sit or dwell. This is an active participle. That's why we have the plural ending here, the im, because it's agreeing with. B'nai Yisrael, that's banim, it's plural. Banim, even though you don't see the mem, because it, you know, it disappeared and became vene for children of, but still it's plural. So this is, has to be plural as well. This is what they are doing, okay? So the children of Israel, ha. Now, why is it ha, Yoshevim? Well, what's happening here, you could look at it two ways. This is an active participle, which can also be thought of as a verbal adjective. That means it's like it's modifying this guy, the construct chain, the children of Israel. All right? And so when you have noun and then you have adjective in Hebrew, they both have to agree in sex or gender, in number, and in definiteness. All right? So this, we pointed out, is definite because it's the children of Israel. Right? And so because that's definite, we need... Our, ad, our um, verbal adjective to also be definite. So that's why the ha. You see? Like if I wanted to say, bless your good name, right? Baruch, and then your good name. Et, and now I would say your name, Shimcha. So it's shame. Name plus cha, shimcha. Now it's definite because it's not any old name. It's your name. We've pinned it down, your name. And I wanted to say your good name. So I have to say ha tov. You see, I can't say baruch et 
Shimcha Tov. That's wrong. Shimcha is definite, just like Yisrael is definite, right? Or Bnei Yisrael, rather. So I have to say Ha Tov. The adjective has to agree in definiteness. They don't have to both have Ha, but they have to agree in definiteness. And there are three ways to be definite. One is a name, like Yisrael. The other is to have Ha in front of it. And the other is to have a suffix. Your, my, his, right? Like we talked about the other day. Is it any old ball or is it Wilson? Right? It's got a name, so it's definite. Or it's the ball or it's your ball. Right? So we know that's not one of the millions of balls in the world. We've nailed it down. It's definite. So if you want to talk about its qualities, the adjectives have to agree then. And so that's really what's happening here. It's just harder to see, maybe a bit more obfuscated because it is a verbal form. Right? Everybody with me? What's happening there? Okay. Now, when you see ha in biblical Hebrew on, in front of an, uh, a, a participle like this, it can have the meaning of a share, like which or who, okay? So we could say, and the children of Israel, or now the children of Israel, who lived, right? notice I put it in the past, there's no time in participles. Please don't confuse this. People get confused sometimes when they are studying Modern Hebrew dialect, because in modern Hebrew, this is how you do the present tense. That's not what it is in biblical Hebrew. The active participle is not a tense. It's really not even a verb anymore, okay? It's kind of like in English, a gerund, like running, like the running man, right? We don't usually think of that as the man is running, right? What kind, what kind of man is he? He's a green man. He's a whole. What kind of man is he? He's the running man, right? The running one. So that's really how this is happening. If this is over your head, it's okay. But for those of you who can digest it, maybe it will help a little bit, especially, you know, lots of people go to Israel, and so they get focused on the modern Hebrew, and it just doesn't work the same way in the Bible, right? It's different. Esther writes, Baruch Hashem, you're so good, teacher, it's difficult for me. I'm, by the way, we fly high back to Hashem. Israel, Hashem, our king, bless us. Adar, too, is here, yes. <coughs> Living high and Baruch Hashem, thank you from... Esther. Very sweet. Thank you so much for sharing the Esther. Shalom, shalom, achoti. Very nice words. Okay. So where are they living? Be'arei Yehuda. Another construct chain. Ah, see, that's interesting. I pressed aqua and I got lime somehow. <laughs> okay. That's been happening a little bit, but I can live with that. It's really a function of how I press the buttons. Training issue. Of course, bait is our inseparable preposition. In. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Yehuda. Well... That's definite, isn't it? He's definite. Because the name, so the definiteness, again, we're going to transfer it to all the words in the construct chain. In this case, one. So this is from the word ale, city. Remember the word of the day? We had an ear with like a skyscraper coming out of it. <laughs> so that's, that's the word for city. So, Are, it's cities of, instead of Arim, cities of Yehuda. But again, because Yehuda is definite, we have to transfer that definiteness over. So, that means the word the is coming on over. Same thing over here. The. Okay. So, in the cities of Yehuda, of Judah. Right? Everybody got that? Vayim loch alehem lechav am. Okay? So the verb here is malach mem lad kaf. And what's cool is that even if you didn't remember what this word is, you very likely know another word that's from the same root. Melech. Melech. 
I mean, if nothing else, from the brachas, you got to know Melech. Baruch atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Hashem, our God, King of the universe, Melech. So Melech, the noun, means king. So if you didn't know this word here, the Malach, you know it's a verb because it's a verbal form. Because look, we've got the Yod in the front, which I hope, if you've been with us for a while, you should be recognizing this already as He. He. Okay. So he is what? He's kinging? Well, what do kings do? He's reigning. So malach, the verb malach, is to reign. By the way, thank you to the one who pointed out that the purple I was using, the black before, wasn't so easy to see. Hopefully this one you can see better. Malach. So while the top one is king, the bottom one is reign, to reign. Right? Like what a king does. The microphone's choppy again, huh? Ah, uh, when I lean in, all right, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll try to pull my tab to me. Thanks for that, Gary. All right, Fuddly Wink, still learning. <laughs> Yofi Tofi. Okay, let's see. Now the Vav, so Yimloch, right? This is the imperfect. It means he is reigning or he will reign. But that Vav in front of it is going to change the aspect. A lot of times people think of it as changing the time. That's okay at this level, maybe, if you think of it as changing the time. So that is our Vav conversive. And he is going to, notice I'll make him a brighter green than the other Vavs. He's changing it. So instead of Yimloch, meaning he is reigning or he will reign, it means and, change the aspect, he reigned. He reigned. It's the same as saying, oh, how did that happen? The same as saying Malach. Malach. Malach means he reigned. And Vayimloch means, and he reigned. They mean the exact same thing, except for the, the possibility of and, when, but, something like that being there, because we usually do translate the Vav also. But you understand? It, putting the Vav there in this way, where you have the Patach and the Dagesh in the next letter, it changes Yimloch to be the exact same as Malach. Same meaning, in Biblical Hebrew. Don't, don't try to do this in modern. <laughs> I wonder what I can do about that choppy microphone. <laughs> Strange. Okay. And he ruled, or reigned, rather reigned, ruled as mashal. So technically reigned. Alehem. Over hem. Over them. them. Are you guys doing any comments or questions? Should be a little bit more legible now. Do you know takers? So okay now, okay, good. Yeah, I'm I'm trying not to lean in as much. Maybe I'll slide the microphone back a bit. That might compensate. <laughs> Brenda likes Brenda likes Fuddly Wink's name. Okay, great, great, Yofi. Right. So as usual. We usually have this order for the verb and the subject, 
we like to say verb followed by subject, right? Not in English, in English, subject and then verb, right? Okay, so here we have our verb. And then the subject is way over here. Here's our subject. Because the feel of biblical Hebrew, where can I put an S? Ah, here, there we go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Maybe color red and yellow. Or <laughs> the feel in biblical Hebrew is when you have a short word, like an indirect object or some kind of modifier or whatever, if it's a short word, sometimes it will jump in before the subject. And that's what's happening here with alehem, right? The text could have said, Vayimluch Bechav Am Alehem. Or it could say, like it said here, Vayamloch Alehem Bechavam. There's really no extra emphasis or anything happening. It's just the language likes to do it this way, where if you have a short word that's part of the sentence, it'll jump in before the subject. So I've shared with you that if you put the subject in front of the verb, then there's some special emphasizing happening, right? But not in this case, not when you put a little word that's not the verb in front of the subject, and don't worry about it. Microphone plosives. See, yeah, maybe something with the internet. Because we didn't have this problem with this microphone before, with it making those sounds. And I never had a screen. I just have the, you know, the little black fuzz on top of it. All right. So that's all, that's the guy, Ruch, Ruch Av Am, that guy ruled over them. Verse eighteen, Vayishloch Hamelech, Ruch Av Am, et Adoram. And let's stop here. So Shalach is the verb Shalach to send, and again we've got the Yod there telling us he is sending, or he will send, and then we have our Vav conversive that changes it. To make it, and he sent. So there's our verb. And the subject here follows closely afterward. Ha mech. The ha. The. Melech. The king. I really love being able to change colors fast and have access to these colors that aren't really <laughs> usually available in PowerPoint. It does give the wrong color every once in a while. I'm not sure what's up with that. It's like it's registering the touch on an adjacent tile or something. So, the king. Oi. There we go. Ha, the Melech king. And who is he? Rechav Am. This is really normal. It's almost like in a positive in English. We'll just say the name of the person and then you say what they're like. We'll say, for example, Eliyahu ha Navi. Right? Eliyahu, Elijah, ha the Navi, the prophet. Right? He's, so you can also say the other way. Right? So we'll say David ha Melech, David the king, or you can say ha Melech, David the king. David, and that's what's happening here. Vaishlach HaMelech, so the king Rechavam sent. Okay, that's really what it is. The Rechavam is part of the HaMelech. It's all together the subject. Well, who did he send? Et, we don't translate. Adoram, this guy. Adoram. Let's see. Gain is all the way down, buddy. Nine, thanks for the Thanks for the advice, but it's it's as low as it can go. Can't reduce it anymore, unless maybe in software. I don't think I have settings for that in the software. Let me look. Okay. 
I'm boosting the volume 35% in the software, but that shouldn't really be doing anything. Yeah, there's no setting for gain though. Yeah, that's a logical suggestion, yeah. All right, okay, let's continue. Asher, who? Al Hamas. Al was over Hamas. <laughs> Not that Hamas. Was over the Mas. No Mas, por favor. Better this way, I think. Over the mass. So he was Catholic. He's over the mass. Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> mass is like forced labor. So these could either be like, yeah, they could be slaves or they could be Israelis who had volunteered themselves for service and other in order to pay back debts or something like this so they could be like indentured servants ser servants so that's mass mass is this whole idea of you can think of it as mass labor and now it's going to get good i'm sorry you don't mean to laugh about it so ragam is to pelt or to throw a stone, ragam, ragam. And here we have, ooh, interesting, in Russian it sounds like vragam, which means with an enemy. Vrag is an enemy, and am is with. <laughs> vragam, vragami, with enemies. There's origami, there's vragami. Yegemu, vayegemu. So the yod tells us it's third person, that's he or they, and then the u at the end tells us they. That nails it down for us. So I'm trying to make sure to point out the verbs more. One of you was mentioning having trouble recognizing the verbal form, so hopefully this will help. You see that ooh at the end, it's a they, okay? And then our verb is just reish, gimel, mem. And this is not a PL form. You might see that dagesh in the gimel there, and you might think, oh, wait, is that, is that the strengthened verbal form? Because that guy, but that is a weak Dagesh, a Dagesh Lenny. He's only there because of this guy, the, the schwa. That's a silent schwa. Whenever you have two schwas in a row in the middle of the word, that's where the syllable splits. It splits right down the middle. So here we have a syllable split. You're wondering how to pronounce it, right? Because of those two schwas. See those guys? Bam! Bam! And any time you have two schwas like this, the first one is silent and the second one is vocal. And so since you have a silent schwa preceding the gimel, gimel is a begad kifat letter, right? Beit gimel dalit, begad kifat, kaf, pe, tav, begad kifat. When any of those letters are preceded by a non-vocal sound, a non-vowel sound, i.e. the silent schwa, this first schwa here, this one's vocal, but this one's silent, then they get that weak dagesh in there. It just changed the ancient pronunciation. Instead of being a soft g, or some would even say like a j, like a jim, uh, it, it meant it was a g, a hard g, like a g, like we would say today. Oh, it only happens when I draw. Very interesting observation. Oh, thank you so much for the week. I appreciate that. Baruch Hashem. Josh says, please hit the thumbs up. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I like I like that. Yes, please, guys. Always make sure to click like if you can. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. So. That's why that's there. It's not, so you understand, this is just a call, Bidyan, just a normal verbal stem. It's not the intensive PL we've talked about before. We have Shavar, which is to break. Maybe I'll draw it. Can you see the dark blue? No, that's too dark, isn't it? Okay. Let's do magenta.
So Shava, so nice to be live with you guys. Ooh, go back. What happened? Ooh, I did not authorize that slide change. Okay. Hold on a sec. PowerPoint's about to die. No problem. We're getting there. <laughs> getting there. There we are. Immersion Kings Bay. Even though it's not Kings 2, but just my naming thing. Okay, boom. And current slide. And we're back. <laughs> So Shavar, this is the call binyan, right? So it's just very basic binyan. Oh, interesting. Maybe I need to run my script again. I don't know why this is bidding to us. Got it now. So Shavar, as a call, just means break, right? But if we augment it and we put a strong dagesh in that middle letter, right? We got number two, the second root letter, not the sheen, not the bait, not the, I'm sorry, the bait, not the reish, right? The, the bird finger, the, the middle finger, put it there. Then that means we're doubling that guy now. That's a strong dagesh. And this is the intensive binyan. We, the vowels will also change for that too. So shavar is to break, but shiber is to utterly smash to pieces, okay? So sometimes people, they see you've got a, a dagesh in your second root letter, and they're thinking, oh, PL, it's that strong verbal form, right? I need a strength. Like, he really was throwing stones hard. <laughs> it's not. It's just, this is a weak dagesh, but they look the same. The weak dagesh, like this guy here, and the strong dagesh, like this guy here, see, they look identical. It's like little two eyes above my fingers. This one is a strong dagesh. That means the mem is doubled. This is a weak one in the cough. It's only for pronunciation because he's preceded by the short, the, the silent schwa. Right? So ba mer kava. Okay? So this one is not doubling. It's just for pronunciation. And then this one, this one is like the shada, if any of you have done Arabic, right? It's saying there's two, there's actually two letters there. Gary says, even the biscuits are burned. <laughs> oh, okay. I missed the previous part. Yes, I was like home meal instead of your dinners in the fridge. <laughs> I know, I know your predilections, Gary. <laughs> I like being here live with you guys too. It's it's actually less work for me to be here live with you because I don't have to pre-record and and then be there with you also in a place, right? So it's less time. So yeah, but. It's strange. It seems the pre-recorded teachings do better on views. I don't know what's up with that. I do have an idea. It's kind of weird in YouTube when you come to the channels. Have you ever noticed there's a button that says videos? And then you go over a few menu items. There's one called live. So if you press videos, you won't see videos that were recorded live. As if they're not videos. This is not a video that you're watching right now. <laughs> and even if you watch it later, it's not a video according to YouTube. It's live. It's live. And so I think maybe that has something to do with it. Visitors to the channel, maybe they just click videos and they don't like, I never thought about this looking at other people's channels either to check. Oh, they did something live to think that live would not show up as a kind of video. It's just weird. The blue looks great. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. So here's the verb. We have our vav conversive there. So, I'm going to translate it, so, and then our subject is Chol Yisrael. And you notice the kaf, the reason it's not Chol Yisrael is because of this guy, the shurik, the long vowel right in front of it. Our begad kafat rule makes the weak dagesh, he left, he left, he went somewhere, <laughs> because of this guy, the u. Okay, so that's why it's Chol Chol Yisrael, the subject. So, so all of Israel, or then all of Israel, stoned bow or pelted bow, pelted against him. So 
So against is really what's happening there. See what's happening, right? Pelted bu against him. And then here it just says stone. So you have to provide the with in English. With stone. So like they're all going out. They got one big stone. <laughs> have you ever seen <laughs> Monty Python's The Life of Brian? There's the blasphemer. And he's really saying God's name. They use like the Jehovah's Witnesses one, right? Jehovah, so-called Jehovah. Not anything like God's name. We don't have a J. It's not a V. It's kind of safe, right? And uh, <laughs> he's like, I did not blaspheme. They're, they're like, of course you did. There were witnesses. And he said, oh, all I said was this dinner's delicious enough for Jehovah. And they said, he did it again. He said it again. <laughs> anyway, so they, they're going to stone him, and a whole bunch of people are carrying, like, a, well, it's bearded ladies, right? They're carrying a big stone to throw together. So it all, it's almost like that's what this looks like. It reminds me of that in the Hebrew. Legamu call Israel. So all of Israel pelted bow against him with Evan, stone, with a stone. <laughs> so this thing just happens sometimes in Hebrew. It'll use a singular noun. Clearly, we have to say stones. That doesn't mean they're all picking up like a mountain and throwing it or something on him. Yeah, that's a good idea, Brenda. Maybe I could. Yeah, maybe the... I've got that little, welcome to Hebrew leadership. Maybe I could change that and mention about the live button. By the way, the videos are only some of our teachings. There's shorts and there's the there's the live. That's a good idea. Yeah, we could do that. Why not? Okay. Evan is stone. I think I told you guys about in in the war against Rome where they crushed us. <laughs> <laughs> where when the Romans would catapult a giant stone, right, against us, the Israeli troops would say, Ben Ma, a, a son is coming. But it's really from Evan. It was just to lose a syllable. There's not time. So instead of saying Evan Ba, maybe you die in that time. You tell people a son is coming, but it was a stone is coming, right? It lost its, its olive. Evan Ba, kind of like the, the golem, right? They deleted the olive from the Met, and then he was just Met, a lower line. Oh, yeah, we could do that before all the live videos. Yeah, sure. But they still won't see it unless they watch the live. <laughs> oh, you mean re-upload it? That's a nice idea, Gary. The only problem is then we lose all of our stats, right? You guys who are here now watching in the, the chat rating, the back and forth, however that affects the algorithm, and it's like a whole new video then. Could consider it, though. <laughs> okay, we're 48 minutes. I better wrap it up. Let's see. How long is... All right, I might not give as much detail for this. Vayamot. Okay. And he died. Yamot is he will die or he is dying. And then we change it with that vav. And really, I should be marking also. And the dagesh that's in the yod. See, that's actually kind of part of the signature. It's not always there, but this is a classic sign of the Vav converse when you're changing an imperfect verb. Okay. And instead of he will die, he died. Vehamelech. And the. Getting sloppy now. Doesn't make me feel good. Ha, this is all part of the the and the king. Oh look, our laser point working. <laughs> Maybe because PowerPoint died before I had to restart it. That guy? He tamets. He, he like psyched himself up. <laughs> really what's happening here is this is the hit pa'el binyan. And let me make myself a bit smaller. I'm kind of in the way here. Is Ryavith here? She usually likes those effects. So amats is to be strong, right? To be strong, like to dig your heels in. And then the hit this this is the telltale sign that we are dealing with the Hitzpael Binyan. Hitzpael. 
Now, if you watched my video, see if I did edit later, I could say here. You can see that video, right? And then it's there. If you've watched my video in the language snippets, there's a menorah. I recommend you watch it if this is kind of mysterious to you, these different verbal stems. We have a menorah that shows us the basic Hebrew verbal forms. It's really beautiful, and it's orthogonal. It's real nice, active over here, passive over here. And in the very middle branch, the kane, the middle reed of the menorah, is for the hitpa'el. It's reflective, to do to oneself, usually. So... He made himself strong. He, like, psyched himself up, is how it feels like to me. La alot, this is the verb, ala, I am la mid hey, and the hey went away with an infinitive form here. So he psyched himself up, la alot, or he strengthened himself to go up. Ba merkava, and here I like this, that we have the two kinds of dagishes, right? You can see what I was talking about before. So we have the first one. This guy is strong, strong dogesh. That means there's two of those letters there. Okay. And then the second one, this is a weak dogesh. He's not working out enough. Needs to hit the gym. Weak dogesh. Okay. They look the same. So you'll get used to identifying them and realizing, okay, this one's just about pronunciation, but this one's telling me the Lamed from Hal, from ancient Hal is there. So this is the, right? This is part of the the-ness, right? So just like we have here, here, and here are the signs of the the, so too we have here and here. He left his footprint behind. And I'm going to mark it the way, the same way. Again, if you have trouble with grammar and the principles and stuff, don't worry. All we need to do is see the patterns. That's all grammar is. Just fancy terms for recognizing patterns in the speech. I did that terribly, but, and it wasn't the color I wanted either, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> enough. So, and then the bait is separate. The bait is a separate guy. This is, he's, he's in or with. And the reason he's got a dagesh is because it's the bait is a but in begad kifat, and there's a tav in front of it, so there's no vowel sound to make it go away. So that's why he's there. This one's here because if we broke up the syllable, it's bamel kava. That's those are the syllables for mer kava. Mer is a closed syllable ending the consonant. Ka. This is an open syllable, long comets va. Notice it's not kova, it's kava. Okay. Unless Ashkenaz, then it's then it's Bamekovo. Great. Thank you, admin. Brenda, put the link to the menorah video right over here. Don't click it now, but you could copy, paste it, or control click and have another window if you want to see that. And we're almost finished. Sorry, we're going a bit longer tonight. Maybe because we haven't seen each other live for a while. <laughs> I'm just gonna finish up verse 18. I don't think I well. Let's see, let's see. I'm not sure if I should do 19. So, to go up with or in the chariot, the Merkava, Lanus, to flee. Noose is running away, it's fleeing. That's. To. To flee. To noose. You can think of, you see the noose? You're going to flee. Time to run. <laughs> so he, he vamooses when he sees the noose. La noose. To flee. And then here we have Yerushalayim. So it feels odd to me because in Torah Hebrew, that would have been Yerushalayim ma. There would have been a hey at there. The, the hey locative is missing. We would have expected a hey here at the end. When you go towards a place, it would have been Yerushalayim, towards Jerusalem, right? Even in many of the Psalms, you know, Na'alei Yerushalayim, come let us go up to Jerusalem, right? So this, as I pointed out with you guys, to you guys before, I just kind of noticed this is part of the style of the type of Hebrew that's being used here in the prophets by First Kings. So the scribe who wrote it down, he doesn't seem to like to use hey locatives. So, <laughs> great. Brenda loves the lives. Hey, Shalom, El Andrade. Okay. 
Wow, we still only got 21 concurrent, though, even though it's live. See, we had more, we had more live views yesterday when we did the, when we did the premiere, pre-recorded. I, 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 anyway, let's see. Okay, I'll just translate the next sentence real quick. We'll, we'll knock it out. I think we're doing okay. We'll keep it under one hour. Vayifshe'u Yisrael, the Veit David, or if we want to read the ancient pronunciation, Dawiv Ad and Hayom Haze. Sorry, I said Ada. I wanted to say until Ad until my brain is combining the English. Okay, so Pasha, this is the verb, Pasha, and you might know the noun Pesha, right? Like in the ancient world in Akkadian, the worst sin was the Khatu Ribu. That was like the, the Khatu, the sin, Ribu, like Rav, like the greatest sin. In Akkadian, it was adultery. But in Israel, the Pesha, from the same root, the Pesha, Rav, the worst sin was idolatry, which is interesting that that's how we were different than the rest of the Middle East, right? They considered adultery to be the worst sin. We considered adultery against God to be the worst sin. That's the pesha, the crime, Rav. Usually pesha is a very serious sin. It's 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 worse than all the other kinds we've gone through before. It's it's violating one of the Ten Commandments, like breaking the Sabbath day or murdering somebody, you know, or breaking the Sabbath day or stealing or breaking the Sabbath day or... <laughs> is there a pattern here? <laughs> you know, or like, you know, just doing some terrible sin is a pesha, right? Idolatry, right? So, but this is the verb. It doesn't mean exactly the same thing. But you can see where crime, pesha, comes from it. Pasha, the verb pasha, just like we had Melech over there as a king and Malach is terrain. So pesha is a crime, but pasha is to rebel. It's one of the many words to rebel. So we've got yish peru, that means they, right? The yod tells us third person. And the U tells us a, that's they. I would like to put black behind it, but not times. So I'll just make it bigger. Hopefully you can see that okay. Or we can. <laughs> it's just too tempting. Interesting, getting a delay as I draw. That's throwing me off a bit. So. Yeah, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> I can't even erase it. It won't erase. It's not erasing. I better not push my luck. The software, maybe it's just going slow. Oh, yeah. It changed, it, it's, it changed slides now. <laughs> All right. They. I think it's what the choppiness is of the microphone. I bet something's slowing down the system because... Suddenly we notice that when I'm drawing, that's when it happens a lot, even if I stay lean out and draw. So maybe it's just taxing the system too much or something. So here's our verb. They, the vav changes it to what we would consider like a past. Perfect. Za. And we got the dagesh there. But Yisha'u Yisrael. Israel sinned, rather Israel rebelled. Be against against maybe I'll write this one out too over here. So I'm not gonna say in just because I kind of scan for it to see what the rest says. And we have a construct chain here. Whoa. What happened? Why is Aqua looking black? Uh, yeah, it's black to the wrong way. And again, it's Veit, which is instead of buy it, buy it is house. Veit is house of. And the reason it's Veit is because this guy is a vocal schwa. He starts the syllable. He starts the word. He doesn't end one. So it's be. And that little eh sound, or as the Yemenite Jews say, ah, that wiped out the, the begad kefat weak dagesh. So Beveit Against, not in, the house of David, right? We have to say the house because using brick red to show it's a brick 
house. Sorry. <laughs> Building a brick house. The definite article, I mean, the definite word, because it's a name, he's going to apply that to the next word. So we have to say against the house of David. Three words left, and then you're done. Ad until Hayom, which is the day, the day. Ha. The Yom. Ha -ze. The this one. Oops. <laughs> Terrible angle. Oh well. C'est la vie. The ze, the this one. And that's just how you have to make it agree. The day that this one means this day. Ad hayom haze until this day. Okay. That's it. I think we're at an hour, so I better let you guys go. An hour one minute. <laughs> Witness Glenn, shalom says, I would pronounce it with the soft F sound because it doesn't have the dagesh. Oh, I was missing you. Sorry. Yeah, Hebrew's gorgeous. I agree, Fuddly Wink. Sorry, I, I didn't see your comment when you wrote it, Witness Glenn. So I'm not sure which one you're talking about there. Okay. The rule for if it's a soft F sound versus a P sound is just if it's got the dot in there. If you see the dot, that's a hard P. Without the dot, it's a soft F. It's a F. But that rule is influenced by if it is preceded by any kind of vowel sound, no matter how short it is, even from the previous word. It gets a bit complicated. If the previous word has a conjunctive accent on it, which means it's read kind of closely, then we lose the P and become F. Something similar happens here in Philippines, right? Like a person who is from the Philippines is a... Filipino, right? But we might say their ethnicity is Pinoy, right? So the same, they also use a P for both F sound and a P sound, like in Hebrew. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, shalom, shalom. You guys have a great rest of the day or evening, whatever the case may be. May you be greatly blessed. Thank you for being here with me. I missed you guys. Live was fun. We'll probably be pre recorded tomorrow. We'll see, just kind of depending on how things are going. And I will catch you guys later. Shalom, shalom. Oh! If you'd like to donate, there and there. There's how you do it. Okay. I almost ended the stream.